Last month, a milestone was reached regarding astronomical observation. For the first time in known human history, we have successfully spotted and identified an object which has traveled to our solar system from interstellar space. However, this object is of a most peculiar shape, and additionally, it displays some rather particular characteristics. A cigar-shaped object, which is about 1200 feet in length, it is such a strange object in fact, SETI. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Project has officially declared that they are planning on using their enormous satellites to scan the object to see if it is a quote, alien probe. Scientists initially thought it was a comet, but it was later reclassified as a possible alien probe and named Oumuamua. Researchers from the SETI Project's wing, Breakthrough Listen, are planning on listening in on the asteroid in the very near future using their Green Bank Radio Telescope in West Virginia. A statement from the team read as follows. Researchers working on a long-distance space transportation have previously suggested that the cigar or needle shape is the most likely of architectural design for interstellar spacecraft, since this would minimize friction and damage from interstellar gas and dust. On the 19th of October 2017, the Pan-STARRS-1 telescope in Hawaii picked up a faint point of light. Scientists soon realized that its orbit shows that it had come from interstellar space, now believing that it has been traveling through space for millions of years. Astronomers suggest that Oumuamua is dense, constructed with a high metal content, lacking any significant amounts of water or ice, and its surface is now dark and reddened due to the effects of radiation from cosmic rays. Could we really be on the brink of actually discovering an alien probe? A probe millions of years old and possibly far more advanced than we are now? The implications are clearly profound. We have in the past covered the intriguing anomaly which was spotted upon an asteroid known as Itakawa. The asteroid conveniently chosen as the target for the first ever satellite mission since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at the asteroid known as Itakawa. It seems during this particular asteroid's enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it has picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, this mysterious object, now perched or quite possibly impaled upon the front of the rock, looks for all the world like an artificial, alien satellite. Although SETI has not yet investigated Itakawa, we will keep you posted on their investigation of our cigar-shaped interstellar visitor. When they land and the hatch opens, perhaps we will be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the interstellar traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1-2017-U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post-solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years past countless other stars before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet, a remnant of another solar system kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history, if we were ever told about such discoveries, of course, one must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life, many of which are over a millennial old, 
The thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world. So it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, there's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and most of the time the media don't really give attention to them." End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So the professor's opinions, no matter how controversial, we find highly compelling. There are countless conspiracy theories which have been created over the years regarding not only the coldest, but also the most remote, unforgiving continent on Earth, Antarctica. Countless tales of ancient civilizations buried in the ice, preserved like something akin to Pompeii, quite possibly complete intact ruins of an ancient, advanced, now lost civilization. Their lifestyles, buildings, even entire cities are claimed by a number of fringe researchers as a real reality. Cities buried miles beneath the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Although we feel this may be an unlikely possibility, there could indeed be undeniable evidence of a past existence still buried under the ice, if indeed they were there at all, for one can never really be sure about the Perry Reese map. Yet today, this is a very unforgiving place, even sparking the inspiration for arguably one of the best science fiction movies of all time, The Thing. Stories of UFOs crashing into this incredibly remote landscape, some in which we have covered in the past, focused in upon by the channel due to the fact that an expedition was indeed made to a particular anomaly, to a feature one indicative of a high-speed crash into the frozen tundra. This site was successfully traveled to within what we presume would have been a mobile laboratory, clearly undertaken by a well-equipped group, one who clearly didn't expect others to have spotted the site via satellite also. So they can clearly be seen via satellite imagery arriving at said crash. A tremendous effort to make, at tremendous expense, thus, a strange effort for any known human-built craft, unquestionably made at great expense. Illogical for a man-made craft, even that of secret technology, but for an alien craft, such efforts could be logically argued as a realistic motive for whoever this team was funded by to make the mission to the site. And there are, indeed, undeniably, some rather intriguing stories which still hover around a number of still classified, still unreleased confidential files regarding events within the Arctic Circle. Claimed by a number of individuals who also claim to have been a part of said mission, a mission known as Operation High Jump was an event during a battle within the Arctic Circle with what could only be described as flying saucers. But alas, Due to the fact that Americans have never publicly released any details regarding the operation, we can merely speculate. However, a story which surfaced on ancientcode.com, a website we have long supported as a superb source of antiquarian knowledge, a story accompanied by what we think, you will agree, are some of the most incredible images ever taken of UFOs, specifically unexplained anti-gravitational craft in flight ever captured. Available thanks to John Greenwald from The Black Vault, who in turn received the incredible images from researcher Alex Mistretta. According to the website, quote, The photos here displayed are evidence of a close encounter between forces of the United States Navy 
and unidentified flying objects on the edge of the Arctic Ocean in March 1971." End quote. Are we witnessing the destruction of anti-gravitational alien craft, an alien encounter, or, quite possibly, weapons testing events targeting reverse-engineered alien technology? The images are, according to said sources, from the mission USS Trepang SSN-674. Our postulations as to what these images reveal are based upon our own logically presumed direction, in which American and many other advanced military nations would take if one were presented with a crashed craft powered by said technologies. These military bodies would indeed pursue the reverse engineering of said technologies, then, secondarily, develop defense systems which were effective upon said technologies. These are, of course, merely mystery history's ponderings in regards to what these images could truly be showing us. And of course, said hypothesis could indeed be incorrect. Yet regardless, the question remains, then what do these images reveal? What are pictured within? Regardless of the purpose of the mission, we find the possible theories surrounding the photographs highly compelling. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash, and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of US government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos, these events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the US government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling.